What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million and some really fresh news. Today as a filming of this video, a new 2025 M1000RR and a 2025 S1000RR was just released. It's always an exciting time when BMW releases flagship super bikes. Let's start off with the 2025 M1000RR. It is the bike that you see on the screen. It's official now. That's actually a BMW photo that's in the background. And let's talk about what's been changed. The winglet's been changed, a little bit of the bodywork's been changed, and in terms of looks, that's pretty much it. The bigger change is that the bike got six horsepower more, now it's rated at 208, which is pretty impressive for a super bike. We'll talk about that in other videos or when we get our hands on one, if we ever do. Let's talk about some other changes that is about the looks of this bike, which is welcomed over here because when we got our 2023 M1000RR, my biggest complaint was there's way too many M logos plastered on it. And if you look at the bike, they got rid of a lot of M logos on the bike. The new winglets are supposed to have more downforce as well. I think they look good, but let's talk about the critical things that I'm gonna be critiquing on. It looks like BMW has continued on with the trend of cost cutting. And it shows on this new M1000RR. If you've already seen this bike, I don't know if any of you have picked up, the bodywork is no longer carbon fiber, guys. The winglets are carbon fiber, but the rest of the bodywork, even in the top trim, is just black. These may be for cost cutting measures, and I don't know what the pricing is. It hasn't been released as of this video yet, but I'd be pretty upset if I were looking forward to buying a 2025 M1000RR being more expensive, which we think that's the trend, right? Everything's getting more and more expensive as it goes by. You don't get the carbon fiber body work, but you get six more horsepower. The other thing that's missing is the aero wheel covers in the bottom of the front forks are gone, which is an easy solution. If you like those, you could always fit the ones from the previous generation or the previous model year, let's say, that you could fit them on. That's an easy fix, but that carbon bodywork may be a deal killer for most of you guys because of what we're gonna talk about a little later on. In terms of the looks, I think the bike overall, in terms of the shape, looks nicer. I like that front end that they added to it, that it's a little more curved, so the bike has gotten rounder. It was already round, but the, the design elements in the front are more round in the front. So technical changes, other than the horsepower changes, now we have the frame that has been changed for stiffness. The subframe looks the same. The numbers on the subframe are different, right? Because on the rear side of the upper fairings in the back, it used to say, I think, M1000RR or something like that, but now it just says 1000. I guess it indicates the CC of the bike. And the big changes that we were thinking that was gonna happen with the rear swing arm didn't happen. It's the same swing arm. But I think it's a little anticlimactic, right? Because we were expecting some big changes with the M1000RR. Those big changes didn't happen. There's very little that's changed. If anything, there is some changes towards cost cutting, as I mentioned. So I think the M1000RR from me gets a meh, you know? It's not that exciting. Let's talk about the exciting stuff now, the 2025 S1000RR. The 2025 S1000RR, and I'm already smiling. You can tell the difference of energy with me when I saw that there's this new bike. Let's talk about looks first. Overall, the bike looks much nicer than the outgoing version. The 2025 gets new angular look. So the M1000RR got rounder, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the 2025 S1000RR actually looks more angular, and it looks really good. I love it, and this new color scheme that we'll talk about looks really, really good as well. Also, in terms of the styling cues, it got the shark fins back on the side fairings. It reminds me of the first generation of S1000RR that was released. That looks really cool. Now let's talk about a little bit of a technical change and also a little bit of a look change. It's that front fender that the bike has. It gets the front fender that's reminiscent of the M1000RR with the integrated cooling ducts for the front brakes. And it seems like it gets it in the non-carbon package and plastic form and also in carbon package as well, which looks to be similar, if not the same, as the M1000RR front fender. 
And for you guys who like those aero wheel covers, you can be sure that it will fit these S1000RR models as well. The bigger wings obviously provide more downforce. It looks similar to the previous generation of the M1000RR wings. And in terms of the color schemes, it still has that classic M Motorsport color scheme, which I think it looks really good on this bike. The black stone metallic stays and this new blue stone metallic that I love because it looks super classy. Some of the technical changes that's happened, apparently now you could get the higher race seat as an option with your M package. All the race pro modes are now standard across the S1000RRs from what we think from the wording that they used on the unveiling of this bike. And furthermore, there is some sort of a quick throttle that you could option out so that you have the benefits of a quick throttle on your S1000RR as well. This is pretty much it in terms of the changes of the S1000RR. I'm very excited about the S1000RR more than the M1000RR, even though we had our little run-in with the BMW experience we had in recent times. I wouldn't be opposed to getting our hands on a Blue Stone Metallic S1000RR because that's how excited I am. This is great because I'm in it for the motorcycles and for the love of motorcycles and that changes that they made to the 2025 S1000RR gets a big thumbs up from me. It's great. Let's see when they release the pricing. We'll maybe do a, some sort of an update for you guys or in our other videos, I'll be for sure mentioning what I think about the pricing. And don't you think that it'll be a great addition since we're getting the new Panigale V4 over here to have the S1000RR to do some build side by side, but also to give you guys side by side comparisons, which you guys seem to love on our videos. Well, I don't know what you think, but these were my thoughts about these two new models that BMW released. I don't expect all of you guys to agree with me and I'd love to see your comments. Let us know what you guys think. Would you be buying one of these? Do I already have an S1000RR or an M1000RR? Would you replace your bike? And you guys can be sure that will be on top of the aftermarket for all of these bikes that will have a specific section on our website that will have the correct applications of these new models. So if you're looking for something specific for your 2025 S1000RR or M1000RR, we'll have all the products with the proper fitment information on our website as soon as possible. And don't you think it'll be great for us to have an S1000RR and a Panigale V4, both brand new 2025 model years, side by side so that we could do some great comparisons for you guys and build them off together. And I'll tell you this, this 2025 S1000RR has me really excited about BMW again. And once I'm off recording this video, I may as well call one of our friendly BMW dealers to see if we can get our hands on one and when we can get our hands on one because I'm very excited. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one. Uh -huh.